The Ghana Empire was a West African empire that existed from the 5th to the 12th centuries, located about 100 miles north of the Niger River in the Sahel region. It was founded by the Soning people and was renowned for its wealth, diversity, and lasting impact on the region. The Ghana Empire played a significant role in trade, with its wealth derived from the gold and salt traded through its territory. Additionally, the empire was a melting pot of cultures and religions, contributing to its strength and prosperity. Kumbi Sole was the capital city of the Ghana Empire, situated in the semi-arid Sahel region. The Soning people obtained small horses from the Sahara nomads in the north, which gave them a military advantage over their neighbors. They used their superior iron weaponry and horses to establish a kingdom, gradually expanding it until it became an empire by the 10th century. Visitors from North Africa began referring to the Soning state as Ghana. However, the Soning themselves called their ancient kingdom Wagadu. To early Arab geographers, Ghana was a tantalizing land of mystery and fabled wealth. This reputation spread throughout the Muslim world. The Soning, on the other hand, preferred to emphasize other aspects of their history, such as family rivalries, the heroic deeds of their ancestors, and their ancestors' relationship with the spirit world. The Soning people have a rich oral tradition that tells the story of their history and culture. One of the most important stories in this tradition is the legend of Wagadu, which tells the story of the founding of the Ghana Empire. According to the legend, Wagadu was founded by a man named Dinga Sise, who was a descendant of the mythical hero Sanjotikata. Dinga Sise was a skilled warrior and leader, and he quickly expanded the kingdom of Wagadu. Under his rule, Wag Edu became a powerful and prosperous empire. The Ghana Empire was well positioned to dominate the trans-Saharan trade. The empire was located in the Sahel region, which is a semi-arid belt south of the Sahara Desert. This location gave the Ghana Empire control over the trade routes that ran through the Sahara. The Ghana Empire was also able to control the trade in gold, which was a valuable commodity at the time. The Ghana Empire's control over the trans-Saharan trade routes facilitated the exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures across West Africa and beyond. As a result, many cultural traditions developed during the empire's reign, some of which are still prevalent in the region today. Here are some examples. Islam, the Ghana Empire was one of the first kingdoms in West Africa to convert to Islam, which spread rapidly across the region as a result of the empire's control over the trans-Saharan trade routes. Architecture, the Ghana Empire's wealth and power enabled it to fund the construction of impressive architectural feats such as mosques, palaces, and other public buildings. These structures often blended local building techniques with Islamic influences. Music and dance, the Ghana Empire was known for its vibrant music and dance traditions, which were often linked to religious ceremonies and festivals. Oral literature, the Ghana Empire had a rich oral tradition, with storytellers and poets passing down stories and histories from generation to generation. Art, the Ghana Empire was also known for its intricate and decorative art, including textiles, pottery, and metalwork. The Ghana Empire was known for its impressive architectural feats, which conveyed the power and prestige of the empire. Here are some of the most significant examples of the empire's architecture. The Great Mosque of Jen, this mosque, located in modern-day Mali, was built in the 13th century and is considered one of the largest mud brick buildings in the world. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a symbol of West African architecture and engineering. The Palace of the Ghana Empire, the Palace of the Ghana Empire was located in Kumbi Sole, the empire's capital city. It was a massive complex with courtyards, gardens, and numerous rooms for the king and his court. The Tikhit Walata ruins, located in modern-day Mauritania, these ruins are the remains of two ancient cities that were once centers of trade and commerce in the region. They are known for their impressive adobe structures and intricate designs. The walls of Kumbi Sole, the capital city of the Ghana Empire was protected by a massive wall made of stone and mud. The wall was built to protect the city from attack and was a testament to the empire's military might. The Tagaza salt mines, although not a building, the Tagaza salt mines were an impressive feat of engineering. The mines were located in the Sahara Desert and were essential to the Ghana Empire's economy, as salt was a valuable commodity for trade. Salt was a vital commodity in the Ghana Empire's economy, 
playing a significant role in the empire's wealth and power. The empire's control over the trans-Saharan trade routes allowed it to control the flow of salt, which was a valuable commodity used for preserving food, seasoning, and treating medical conditions. The Ghana Empire's location near the southern edge of the Sahara Desert gave it easy access to the salt mines of Tagaza, located in modern-day Mauritania. The empire controlled the trade routes that led to the mines, allowing it to monopolize the salt trade and impose taxes and tariffs on traders. The empire's ability to control the salt trade gave it immense economic power, allowing it to accumulate vast wealth and resources. This wealth was then used to fund the construction of impressive architectural feats, support the military, and promote religious and cultural institutions. The importance of salt in the Ghana Empire's economy can be seen in the fact that the word Ghana itself means war chief or ruler in the Sonic language, but it is also derived from the Arabic word Gaina, which means a wealth or riches. This reflects the importance of the empire's wealth and power, which was largely based on its control of the salt trade. The Ghana Empire's control over the salt trade had a significant impact on other regions, both within West Africa and beyond. Here are some examples. Trans-Saharan trade, the Ghana Empire's control over the salt trade allowed it to dominate the trans-Saharan trade routes, which connected West Africa with North Africa and the Mediterranean. This trade network facilitated the exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures across the region, leading to the development of vibrant and diverse cultural traditions. Islamic influence, the Ghana Empire's control over the salt trade also facilitated the spread of Islam throughout West Africa. As Muslim traders traveled across the Sahara, they brought with them Islamic ideas, practices, and beliefs, which gradually took hold in many parts of the region. Economic competition, the Ghana Empire's control over the salt trade made it a powerful economic force, but it also led to competition and conflict with other kingdoms and empires in the region. For example, the Mali Empire eventually challenged the Ghana Empire's dominance over the trans-Saharan trade, leading to a series of wars and conflicts between the two kingdoms. European exploration, the Ghana Empire's control over the salt trade also drew the attention of European explorers, who sought to establish trade relations with West Africa. This eventually led to the colonization of the region by European powers in the 19th and 20th centuries. The society of the Ghana Empire was complex and sophisticated. The empire was divided into a number of smaller states, each with its own king or ruler. These rulers were subordinate to the king of Ghana, who was the supreme ruler of the empire. The society of the Ghana Empire was also highly stratified, with a rigid social hierarchy based on birth and wealth. At the top of the hierarchy were the king and his court, followed by the aristocracy and wealthy merchants. Social mobility was limited, and it was difficult for people to move up in the social hierarchy. The Ghana Empire was a complex society with a division of labor. Farmers, miners, craftsmen, and traders all played important roles in the empire. Farmers grew crops such as millet, sorghum, and beans, which provided food for the empire's population. Miners extracted gold, which was an important trade commodity. Craftsmen made goods such as cloth, pottery, and metalwork. Traders transported goods between different parts of the empire and beyond. The Ghana Empire was wealthy and prosperous, thanks to its control of the trans-Saharan trade routes and its gold mines. The empire also traded in salt and ivory. The wealth of the empire allowed its rulers to build large cities and support a powerful army. One of the most important commercial cities in the Ghana Empire was Odeghost, which was located about 125 miles northwest of the capital city of Kumbi Soleil. Another important king in the history of Weg Edu was Daibi Sissoko. Only a few deeds of the Ghana rulers have been recorded in history, and many of their names remain unknown. However, one legendary figure in West African history was Daibi Sissai, who played a pivotal role in the founding of the ancient Ghana Empire. According to legend, Daibisisai was the younger son of Dinga, the founder of the empire. One of the few known kings of Ghana was Tenka Menon, who was said to have reigned during the empire's peak. He is remembered as one of the most powerful and wealthy kings of Ghana, renowned for his wealth, wisdom, and military might. Under his reign, the empire reached its height of power and influence in West Africa and expanded its territory through successful conquests of neighboring lands. 
Despite limited specific information about the wars and accomplishments of individual kings, the Ghana Empire is remembered as a significant force in West African history. Its wealth and military might helped it dominate the region for centuries, and its control over the gold fields of West Africa made it an important center of trade and commerce. The Almoravids, who had become the most powerful force in the Western Sahara, recaptured Autogast from the Sonic of Ghana in 1054 and marched north through the Sahara. In the same year, they captured the great trading city of Sijilmosa in southern Morocco, where gold coins were minted. After the death of Almoravid commander Abu Bakr in 1087, he was replaced not by a single successor but by six men from his family. These six men engaged in a power struggle, which destroyed Almoravid unity and gave the Sonic an advantage. By around 1100, Ghana regained its commercial and political dominance. However, the fall of the Ghana Empire was also due to climate change. The once wet climate that had made farming successful in the Sahel deteriorated, and increasing aridity caused difficulties for agriculture and human habitation. The Sahara Desert was also spreading farther south, encroaching on previously fertile areas, leading to decreased agricultural productivity and reduced income from taxes and trade, weakening the power of the Ghana Empire, and ultimately causing its decline and collapse. Internal struggles and political conflicts within the empire also contributed to its downfall. The small states of Kanyaga, Daira, and Mima rose to the south of Ghana in more hospitable savanna lands closer to the upper Niger River and its tributaries. By the 12th century, Soso, ruled by a powerful lineage of blacksmiths with the family name of Kanti, had become one of the strongest successor states, expanding into neighboring regions and extending its authority over the old Ghana empire. The Mali Empire that succeeded Ghana was founded in the first half of the 13th century. The impact of the Ghana Empire on the societies of West Africa was significant and enduring. The empire's control over the trans-Saharan trade routes allowed for the exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures across the region. This led to the development of vibrant and diverse cultural traditions and facilitated the spread of Islam throughout West Africa. The Ghana Empire also had a profound influence on the political structures of the region, with its sophisticated governance system serving as a model for later empires such as Mali and Songhai. The empire's wealth and power also enabled it to fund the construction of impressive architectural and engineering feats such as mosques, palaces, and irrigation systems. These structures not only served functional purposes but also conveyed the power and prestige of the empire. Additionally, the Ghana Empire's decline and absorption into the emerging empires of Mali and Songhai marked a significant turning point in West African history, leading to the rise of new political, economic, and cultural systems that shaped the region for centuries to come. The Ghana Empire was known for its sophisticated society, division of labor, and complex system of governance, serving as a model for other West African civilizations that followed, such as the Mali and Songhai empires. If you enjoyed this video please leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe as it enables us reach a wider audience thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.